With everyone settling into the changes to the abilities and the sandbox in general, there have been a few changes that have gone a bit under the radar. Today I will take five of your Warlock builds from the comments section and from my livestream and rate them and judge them based on their offense, defense, versatility, survivability, speed, and consistency, and then grade them for how fun and unique they are while still staying powerful. Let's get to work. The first build we're going to look at here is a build I've been running for a little under four years, basically as long as Destiny 2 has been out and special weapons have become a thing. This build is about four years old, which is just crazy. And this thing is so much fun. It is hands down the fastest build in the Crucible, like without a doubt, even faster than Top Tree Dawnblade, even faster than the changes that came to Shoulder Charge. Nothing beats this warp speed build. It's flexible yet aggressive. We have the Mida multi-tool in the primary ammo slot, which despite it being a scout rifle is pushing TTKs a 0.9 at any range with lower resiliences dying to three head and one body shot. The high handling and high reload speed on this means that the weapon's basically always ready for you. The changes that are a little under a year old now that came to the Midas Catalyst, which gives it no distractions, might not happen often, but if you are ever in a situation where let's say you just need to straight up outgun a DMT, you can absolutely get away with that. But the biggest thing, of course, is the increase in movement speed, which plays perfectly into this build's theme, as well as it keeping your radar up. You always are aware of what's happening. Run this with Astro site verse to tear time and space apart like tissue paper combine this with a shotgun for close quarter encounters and you're like a turbo boosted super smash brothers fox player who's been hitting the caffeine a little too hard this build has dodged almost every nerf that has come to the sandbox i mean when's the last time they've nerfed scout rifles and slug shotguns because they require precision will probably never get a serious touch either so even though shotguns as a whole has been changed this still remains a very high contender of course i did say almost every nerf rip handheld supernova and with the recent release of eager's edge you with heavy ammo can really schmove with very little effort it's only real struggle is with hand cannons which i know are very prevalent but one blink forward or one blink back and now you're either in mitre range or in shotgun range if you want to emulate quicksilver from x-men this is the build to go offense seven defense seven versatility seven survivability six because the subclasses passives gives you a little bit of health back with ability kills speed 10 this is literally the fastest thing you can do in crucible without needing heavy or some type of super and consistency seven flavor of course i'm going to be a little bit biased on this but s and viability a plus I've actually played with this build before from my live streams, which we do on Tuesday, by the way, at 1 p.m. Pacific, but Well of Radiance has been on our radar since the ability changes came through. It's the fastest charging super in the game, and even though ability regens have been nerfed pretty heavily, this one still can maintain almost all of its abilities pretty much all the time if you've got teammates, which of course, in 6v6, you always have a litany of teammates to give buffs to. This runs Monte Carlo, Felwinter's Helm, Well of Radiance, and I decided to run this with a fusion rifle, or maybe chat decided to run this with a fusion rifle what this build is really trying to dial in on is getting a melee kill and getting a huge huge bonus if i remember correctly if you can get absolutely everything to proc including felwinter's helm monte carlo's markov chain thing as well as the bonus damage that you get from hitting somebody with middle trees melee with the 25 percent you get well over 50 percent damage bonus to your Monte Carlo, which just is insane. This thing will kill faster than a heavy weapon. The problem is the low range melee with low mobility is like wandering into an alligator pit with a broken ankle. You are going to be eaten alive 99 times out of 100. The fusion really helped a lot. By the way, does anybody have a weird thing with fusions and builds? Like anytime you have a fusion in a build, it just slowly becomes your primary weapon maybe that's just me this was just a null composure which i know is very easy to get your hands on so if you want to kind of emulate something like this go for it felwinter's helm is synergistic but it's like using toothpaste for hot sauce on a burrito it's bad and i would never take felwinter's helm seriously i think it would be better if we ran something like ophidian aspects which increase our melee range which can really help the whole melee thing get tied together a little bit as well as allowing us to switch between weapons a little bit easier and reload it has potential but it's lacking punch pun intended Offense, six. Defense, six. Versatility, six. Survivability, seven. Speed, five. Consistency, four. Flavor, A. Viability, B minus. 
I made some merch for a friend of mine in the Discord named Electro who loves throwing knives, especially with the arthritis and brace. If you want to get your hands on it yourself, I guess you can have one too. Link in the description if you would like to rep the chancla. So at this point in our live stream, chat was seeing that this was going relatively well. There are a few misses on builds here and there, but all in all doing okay. So Duke decided it was time for me to suffer. I freaking hate trace rifles in pvp what do you do with them they take special ammo so you can't put them with another special weapon most of them are exotic barring the retrace path which i guess to be fair to the thing i haven't given that much time they lack the ability to one shot and they have similar weaknesses to primaries yes you can damage buff them but you could also just fusion rifle somebody and kill them at the exact same range if i had the choice between running a trace rifle pvp build or sticking my groin in a pissed off anthill i'd be reaching for the peanut butter before they finish their sentence what do you pair them with you can't run them with a double special loadout because if your enemy's not running special weapons fuck you you don't get any ammo what do you do with a scout and a pulse rifle then you have no close range options and a very average lackluster mid-range option go auto and hand cannon double down well what's the point of the trace rifle at that point just get good Go for close range, do it for like a sidearm or an SMG. Then again, lackluster mid range with no long range option. Your, whew, your best bet is to commit to one range and hope to God that you get lucky, which thankfully we did. We had Cauldron and it, it, was, it was okay. <sighs> to be fair to this weapon combo, I wanted to give this the best chance possible because I knew there was kind of a secret buff that came to this particular combo of running Mantle of Battle Harmony and the Agger Scepter specifically with the Catalyst because now primary weapon damage, special weapon damage, weapon damage in general now gives you your super energy back, not necessarily kills. So the thought is if you actually can get the Catalyst to proc, which is a laundry list of things to do, but if the stars can align and you can get this to proc, then theoretically you could go on a really long tear. So I spent about an hour and a half mindlessly the destiny tool equivalent to a lobotomy grinding the first encounter of the grasp of avarice just shooting thrall and getting pissed off at wizards to finally get the catalyst finished and after all of that what do i get it's still shit it's still awful it's not worth it why would you ever take this thing it cost your super it takes special weapon it cost your exotic slot it takes so much commitment to get this damn thing to do even something remotely interesting and if you have a team that's even semi-competent they're gonna just one shot you anyway it's never going to be worth it to take a trace rival into pvp seriously i have to at least at the very minimum give this thing credit for being unique it is certainly unique but you know what's also unique putting my fingers into a blender while it's caught on fire dipped in battery acid <sighs> thankfully it is shockingly good in pve i was able to get the aggro scepter to get my super back while draining my super I don't wish a trace rifle build in PvP on my worst enemies, but I gotta give it points for at least on paper being interesting. Offense 2, Defense 3, Versatility 2, Survivability 2, Speed 5, Consistency 2, Flavor A, Viability F. Fuck you, Agar Scepter, you're only good for Twitch clips. The only solace I was able to acquire, my friend who does some voice acting work, was in the live stream with us and could lift my spirits. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get around its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care. What humans think is impossible. <laughs> why was that so appropriate for Drifter? Or <laughs> why did that have like perfect Drifter energy? This build isn't necessarily something new, but it is still a lot of fun. Arc Souls, Getaway Artist, no time to explain with some type of special with Demolitionist preferably and high discipline. With everything comboed together, if you're able to get the no time to explain to actually do its perk, then you're basically a one man raid team with the Arc Souls. You can punch out a lot of damage really consistently from like mid to long range with ease. This also has a decent amount of team support. So if you're looking for a well-rounded off meta contender versus the more meta choices, there are far worse options in this setup. 
The Pulse Rifle can push a .67 TTK. With a fair amount of forgiveness, you're almost always ready for the next fight. The buffs that came to Bottom Tree Stormcaller make this build very fast on its feet. When you're near teammates, you feel like you're running around with transversive steps or stompies, even though I clearly wasn't. All in all, a great choice and something definitely fun to play to mix it up for yourself. Offense, 6. Defense, 8. Versatility, 7. Survivability, 5. Speed, 7. Consistency, 7. Flavor, A+. Plus. Viability, A-. Minus. Bastion Shire is in an Eager Edge sword with Ophidian Aspect isn't necessarily the most innovative build, but Bastion did... Uh, about a few months ago get a relatively hefty nerf within pvp as it's no longer able to with one of those bursts that come out of the three bursts one shot a guardian and now it takes at least two or more so this pushes bastion firmly into b tier but it's still nevertheless a pretty good choice and our only choice for fusion rifle in the primary slot until we get a stasis fusion rifle shakira's wrath is a bit under the radar, but it's definitely not off meta. The role I had here was pretty solid as well, running a kill clip role, so I was able to string together kills very, very easily. Ophidian Aspects are literally always good in any situation. There is never a situation where you'll take Ophidian Aspects and go, man, this exotic is such a waste. It's always good to have better reload speed and handling, especially in PvP, on top of the increased melee range. The downside to this build is that it does have a pretty dedicated range you have to stick to. You can't really push long ranges that well, and close ranges you're struggling a little bit as none of your weapons are an insta-kill because the fusion does have a little bit of a wind-up. I was running this with Devour, which the build maker didn't specify, so I can't give a whole lot of points for, but it was very synergistic with everything I was doing. I was able to tear through people at the mid-range pretty consistently. I never had a situation where I felt I needed to sort of reset outside of just reloading my weapons, which of course, Ophidians do very quickly. Devour and Kill Clip is a fantastic combo. I can't wait for the Void 3.0 changes where hopefully we can play even further into Devour and make this even more interesting. This is quite good being sort of an under the radar, sort of meta, sort of off meta, if you want to put some apes on the endangered species list. Offense, seven. Defense, eight. Versatility, six. Survivability, seven. Speed, six. Consistency, eight. Eight, flavor C minus and viability A plus. Let's try a minimalist outro here. Sub, like, comment, merch, bless your face, deuces.